I can't believe it's been over two years since this airplane first flew, and I'm gonna share a lot of what I've learned in that time. So this is the second annual inspection for this aircraft, and in this video, I'm gonna answer all the questions. The main questions were like, what did things cost? What did we do differently? What do we like? What would I change? There have been some snags and we've broken a few things, and I took Ray for a flight while we talked about it. That is so crisp and nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good roll rate, no question. This airplane has been operating for two years and about 200 hours. The first major trip was to AirVenture 2021 and then to Alabama for paint. And that was just before I flew it to AirVenture 2022. And most recently, I flew it a thousand miles from Canada to Texas for the Flight Sim Expo where it was on display with a simulator emulating the exact avionics that are on board. That's gonna be some great content coming soon. I learned a ton while building this airplane and of course flying it has yielded many lessons as well. I'm gonna answer a bunch of questions in this video. The most common one though being, what was the overall cost? So I'm not gonna make you wait for that answer, but some context first is that we built this airplane over about 25 months through 2019 and 2020, had some stoppages for a bunch of obvious reasons. We were working with a small team at the Canadian Aviation Museum, where I'm a proud member of the Yellowbird crew Hence the paint scheme on the RV-14 that's reminiscent of the fleet here. So to answer that question in terms of total cost, not accounting for build facility, tools, and consumables, with a VFR glass panel, IO360 engine, fixed pitch prop, modest paint and interior, this could be had for 150,000 USD. But for this one, it's a fully maxed out IFR panel and I didn't skimp on anything. We tried to put the best of every possible option in here. So in US dollars, you're looking at about a quarter million dollars worth of components sitting here. So stick around for a more detailed breakdown of individual components, what the costs were, things that we changed, modified, things that broke, things that I wish I knew. I'm going to frame this around a flight with Ray, who's a fellow RV-14 builder who came out to help me start the second annual inspection and we went and did a flight to warm up the oil before I drained it. I'm going to, I'll just give it to you at 300 feet. I'll yeah. just, I'll be pulling power back to climb. And you want to fly it, we'll climb for like 110 yeah. or faster. They're probably going to give us the 2500 foot restriction in the zone and we're going to get there fast. Yeah. I'll bug that now because that's probably what we're going to get. Ray is a retired corporate jet pilot. He'd done transition training about a year prior with Mike Seeger from Vans, but he'd not flown behind a panel like this or seen the Thunderbolt engine before. Fox Rock Charlie Golf Alpha, Windsor Tower, line up and wait, runway 12 at Alpha. Line up and wait at Alpha on 12 Fox Rock Charlie Golf Alpha. A lot of the questions that he was asking during this flight were the things I was going to plan to answer in this video anyway, so it made sense to use it here. We're going to do a detailed tour of the panel and talk about a bunch of other things that he's deciding on for his airplane. Charlie Golf Alpha Tower, the Cessna head will be in the right-hand circuit. A left turn out for you, not above 2,500 feet in the zone. Wind 1608 from Alpha, clear takeoff from way 12. Clear takeoff 12 with a left turn out, not above 2,500 in the zone. Charlie Golf Alpha. I'll just give him a second because yeah. we're going to be fast. Starting his turn. Yeah. All right, here we go. Pitch fine. Power is set. Temperature and pressure is good. That's the angle of attack. Disregard. I need to look into either tweaking the calibration or turning down the volume on that, and I think there might be a way to momentarily mute it. Okay, your controls. Okay. Your control. I'll break down every major component and the associated costs, as well as explain modifications we made and share some specs as far as the airplane performance and specific feedback from my team and I. But after overall cost, the next question I get is, are you happy with the airplane? So in terms of things I love about the airplane, the looks and the speed, awesome. But both of those things come with a small cost because it is tricky to work on in terms of removing the cowl and the wheel pants. To get the cowl off, there's a lot of hidden pins in there. There's no fasteners for friction so the airflow is great and the wheel pants to get them off and expose the tires there's a lot of screws so I want to say getting the cowl on and off including the wheel pants you're looking at 45 minutes to an hour job so I can't get easy access to the valve stem to check tire pressure but I know how big the flat spot is for about the target pressure that I want I measured that and I kind of use a little tool to check the size of it so that's that's the way I've been ballparking my tire pressure but I know now with the new tubes it holds pressure a lot longer than the stock one did. 
I upgraded the tires and the tubes to the Michelins, which have held the air pressure a lot longer than the stock ones did. And also the stock tires, I burned through them pretty quickly in 200 hours. I also went through the brake pads within the first 200 hours, which I didn't expect. But learning how to fly this thing, I probably rode the brakes more than I should have, maybe taxiing with higher power settings than maybe I should have. Okay, now it's just too loud to talk. So let's get back on board with Ray to address the main complaint that I have about the airplane. I think I see what you say about that trim. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, as we get faster, it's even more. Yeah. We're not using the auto trim feature, which I think negates any of the software settings that can slow it down. And full disclosure, I'm not caught up on the latest Garmin firmware, so I need to learn more about that. But meantime, we've got the single speed trim motor, so I think that's why it's really touchy at high speeds. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right. It's always a briefing item before I hand controls to anyone that they need to use tiny taps on the button as opposed to holding it down, especially in cruise. I brought Dave, the chief pilot from the museum, in for some more technical insights on this. Trim, you want to get into the trim? Yeah, we can talk about the trim. Um, so Should we go to the back and do it? The, the aileron trim in this airplane is bang on perfect. I'm not a huge fan of the elevator trim. I find it hypersensitive and do not believe you could overpower the trim system negative if it was at a cruise scenario. I think you could do it at 90 knots on approach, but if this thing ran away negative in cruise with your hand off the stick, I think it'd be a really scary situation. Almost be more comfortable if it was a manual trim system, just knowing that there's actually a servo motor in there that's electrically actuated that could run away for various reasons. For example, like we did not configure the autopilot to manage the trim and later found out that was probably a good idea. So. Um, it's probably my biggest complaint about the airplane, to be honest. The rest of it is kind of little nitpicks. So that's really our only negative feedback about the airplane. Obviously some things have broken and we've had some snags, which I'll share shortly. But the other main question I get is what's your favorite feature? Yeah, so maybe let's go to four and we'll okay. just play around if you want to do some rolls or anything. Do you have any aerobatic experience? I have done a little bit. I had an intro, just a couple flights in a Dabria. That's okay. been a long, well, yeah, it's been a few years. It's hard to pick one favorite thing, but I'm excited that this is an aerobatic capable IFR platform, which is why I chose the RV14 airframe. It's the tail dragger configuration, and we went with the quick build kit valued at about $65,000. Hoover is not being helpful, but he's excited to be here. I'll cover the costs of all the major components shortly, but there's a dedicated episode that addresses the expenses related to facility, tools, and other expendables. It was an honor to work in this massive museum hangar. This was a training facility during World War II, and the crew offered some amazing mentorship and support. Perry was the team leader. On the seven kit, we had uh, full we had full size prints and then a separate binder with all the instructions. This okay. this is probably better. Perry had completed the build of his RV7 a decade before the start of this project. His younger brother John had just retired and was working on his PPL during the RV14 build, but he's got some exciting news. So I guess first off, congrats on being an RV4 owner. Heck yeah, I've got the grin. Yeah. <laughs> John was definitely one of the MVPs of the build. We'll be bucking them blind, a real challenge. Anyway, we shall overcome. A little bit more. It's awesome that he's now a Vans aircraft owner himself. Good rivet. Okay. What comes to mind is, uh, you know, many, many, many times during the build, I hear Perry say, anybody can do this, a you know, any dummy can do this, and, and we're living proof that they can. <laughs> so back to the overall value of things, the airframe is largely just these metal parts. For other components, you've got a lot of choices to make. I think overall we love the airplane. You know, we love being at the top. We did everything at the top. So we timed things just right and we're able to get one of the first EXP 119 versions of the IO390 Thunderbolt. So that's what's powering this thing. And we also got an early version of the Explorer Raptor composite three blade prop from Hartzell. It's constant speed and it's got that awesome chrome spinner. Now this thing is light, but look at the performance we're getting with it. It's insane. Uh, a downside though is that we are a little bit light in the nose. I'll talk about that a little bit more later and everything at the top has its own setbacks because we have a tremendous amount of complexity in the airplane with the avionics and the wiring especially. I've definitely done some recrimps and some repairs on the wiring. Don't love taking it apart to work on it. Um, it's not that it's difficult to take it apart, it is time consuming, but mostly I'm just concerned around chipping, scratching, because the paint is flawless. An upcoming episode will cover the entire paint process, but this beautiful paint job was designed and executed by Evoke Aviation. 
This is also a pain. You gotta get right in here. And when the engine's hot, this tiny area to work. Luckily I'm skinny. So that's the pin that goes in the back. There are two of those pins and they're definitely the hardest ones to work on. And to Dave's point, we do have some chips from not being gentle enough when placing the cowls on the ground. All right, yeah, so go ahead, just do some S turns and fly around and just, it's all yours. So you have a similar setup going on with yours? I'm going to be a 650. Yeah. It'll be the 507 on the bottom here, my uh, audio panel, and then a 650. Yeah, I was, I, I wanted an audio panel. That's just how I was so used to my, my whole work yeah. life. But in the end, we couldn't fit it. So I have yeah. it I have it here, and it's actually quite good. I would really like to have done the 750, but I, I was going to have the G5 plus my ignition computer, still wanting to have the uh, jettison. Yeah. I just figured I'm not going to have the space for it, so I didn't do it. Yeah, we knew for sure we had to move the canopy jettison. So, yeah, putting the audio panel over here just means I have to press audio right there, and then yeah. that gives me all the controls if That's I want to do something. That's not too bad, but I know, like, if somebody's learned blasting me out, I want to be able to reach up there and just zip it down real quick. But the mic selector is pretty good, though. That's right here with these arrows. Yeah. And you got it there, too. What's also cool about this is that you have an audio panel as well, so you can, oh. you can hit it. There you go. Oh. Um, all right. And yeah. all your options and everything else you want to do there. Yeah, and of course the split, however you want to look at that. Yeah. Aerobatics did not require a parachute in Canada, but I got one anyways for flying in the US and for competing. I also got a Raven air oil separator to solve this problem. The airplane in the stock configuration does lose oil if you go negative at all. That's not a problem for gentlemen's aerobatics like loops and rolls, but flying the sportsman sequence for competitions, several of these maneuvers are unavoidably negative for a brief time. So when things slow down this season after AirVenture, I'm going to install that Raven system. Something else I'm dealing with is that the nose is light due to the composite prop and some other upgraded firewall forward components. So I've got the airplane apart in a borrowed hangar here doing a little bit of maintenance and I also had to do the 24 month static test and ELT recertification. Knowing what I know now, I should have just done that at the same time as the annual, which was like a month ago, two months ago. I'm gonna lump those together next time. But anyways, what I learned here also was I had to run the battery down quite a bit to do it. It takes a while for the technician to run all the tests. I'm glad I got an EarthX battery on board. That's one of the components that I didn't even think of when I first built the airplane. I just bought it after having a really bad experience with the first start because we killed the battery. Here we go. Clear front. Oh, come on. We're losing the power now. Are we rebooted the system? <sighs> That's a whole other episode. But anyways, but we had the panel powered up for over an hour, maybe two hours, while the technician ran all the tests for the static recertification. And I'm glad I had the EarthX battery because I don't know if the stock battery would have handled that much panel uptime. I do have a power unit that Dave built that we can run this thing for all day long at shows and so on, but I forgot to bring it here. And she cranked up just fine after we did a ground run check. So definitely really glad to have the EarthX battery. And I didn't even work with them as a sponsor for the first year that we had the aircraft built. I just bought it right away when I realized how not up to the task the original battery was. So. That's definitely a component that I'm glad I've got. But of course the downside is that the battery was so much lighter than the stock one and the new version of that battery is actually even lighter so I'm glad I got the previous version in my case. And also the paint did add some weight to the tail so it moved my CG back a little bit. Here's an example from the Flight Sim Expo flying with John and a bunch of baggage and full fuel. We pushed it right to the back of the envelope there and could only fly for about half of our fuel. Something else that we maxed out on was our lighting kit from AeroLeds. We went with as much as we could possibly fit on the airplane from these guys. Unfortunately, I was too soon to get in on the new integrated wingtip that they're offering. That looks pretty awesome. Anyway, let's get back on board for some more flying with Ray. Yeah, so go ahead and just do some steep turns. Or I'll, I'm going to disable ESP just so that doesn't okay. yell at you. Right. That's disabled, and then I get the ESP inhibit as well. Okay. So we made a hard switch so I can leave the autopilot on. Back when doing acro. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, do try to be eyes outside though for any of that stuff, yeah. just so you're not... Uh, and I'll get rid of the flight director just because there's no point in looking at that. Yeah, so we got the dual G3X Touch, GTN 750. Of course, the uh, 507 autopilot, awesome. Yeah. And the backup G5, and then I got Canada requires us to have two separate nav comp sources. Yeah. That okay. could have been a separate GPS. But I went with that because of the space. It was kind of difficult, and in the end, the simplicity of it is nice. Just if there was a legit GPS failure, we would have that. All right. Let's just go back the other way here. 
And then customizing the engine controls, man, I had this little space freed up here, so yeah. I just kind of put some stuff there. So I still love that I did this for formation flying and aerobatics, it's great. And the, the armrest comes together really beautifully. This is from Aerosport Products. They did an awesome job. The price is variable based on what you do. One bit of feedback that I've got is that the throttle friction is hard to get at between the seat there, so I've got it set pretty tight. And we did custom control cables from McFarlane, also high-end certified equivalent. So the price on this stuff is quite variable as far as what you can do. Uh, and I'm gonna be using that, I do believe. I probably won't have as much. I'll have the alternate air, the call flap. And I might put the takeoff go around there. Yeah, it wasn't really possible to wire it to the throttle. Yeah, that'd be nice, but uh, that's difficult engineering, I'm sure. Yeah, it just seemed like asking for trouble. And yeah. it's, it's not that bad to just make that the SOP. I just press it here. Usually, you'd be going for flaps anyways, although I do have it on the right. stick. I'm remembering my sight picture from that uh, time with Mike. Yeah. Oh, it is pretty low. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that, that took me a while to get used to, is level flight is beautiful visibility, yeah. especially after sitting on the ground where you're so blinded. Yeah. Once you get a level, it's real nice. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with this setup. Um, yeah. can't say it would change anything about the panel necessarily. This is good stuff. He has the uh, advanced flight systems in the uh, yeah. band airplane. Yeah, I just grew up with Garmin. I love Garmin, yeah. and I'm really happy with it. I just love the workflow for the GTN. Yeah. And the way it talks to the G3X. Well, if you feel like doing something, uh, you want to do a loop? Yeah, I think we could do a loop. Uh, I'm okay. gonna let you do that. Okay. So we'll just set up like uh, the controls then. Yeah, you got it. So we'll just set up lined up with these, with, like the road between those greenhouses. Yeah. Back to the kilo tower. And then my checklist for aerobatics is to make sure there's nothing loose, which I've already done. The only thing back there is a headset case. I checked yeah. the fire extinguisher earlier. Is tight. Yep. ESP is on. And power for a loop would be like 24 squared or so. So okay. just bump in a bit more power. You ever do that from level flight? Oh yeah, man. <laughs> it's 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 nice. That's my, that is sweet. All right, so it'll be about a three and a half G pull. Okay. What I will do actually first is just do my uh, clearing turn because I wasn't really paying attention when you. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. And we Good also idea. have the traffic scope up. Yep. But I'm pretty sure it's just us up here right now. Okay. I got nobody there. And I guess we'll just start it at 4,200, because that's where we are, 155. Are you ready? Okay. That'll be a pretty pretty firm pull. Looking at the horizon. And then checking the horizon now, less pull. And bringing back the pull. Think rate, pull up. And just under 4,200, it's not bad. All right, your controls? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably couldn't do too many of those. <laughs> Before getting back to more aerobatics with Ray, let's talk about some snags and things that have broken. The composite prop and the upgraded lightweight battery meant that I was chasing down some firewall forward weight that I wanted to add, which was the main reason that I included the backup alternator. It ended up decoupling after a couple of flight tests using it. Now the good news is it was easy to repair and they sent me two new couplers, which is not necessarily a great sign, but anyways. Another issue that I had was my PMAG uh, failed inspection after 100 hours. It had too much shaft play. The good news is they were super awesome about servicing it within a couple of days. And my heat muff end caps broke. I ended up upgrading these ones to the more solid ones from Vetterman. Apparently Vans has switched to shipping those upgraded ones now. I also had some issues with the exhaust end stage mounting thingies here. Ultimately I had to bottom out the springs and they still had too much play. So I definitely don't want to reposition these pipes because of those cutouts in the cowl. And I think another challenge we're going to have is this fuel servo is pretty tight to that. As I was already in communication with Vetterman, I ended up deciding to upgrade the whole system. Clint did a great job working for my pictures and videos and measurements, and the new exhaust is more robust overall. Added about a pound firewall forward, which I needed. The fit was great except for one area where it was just under a half inch of clearance so I added some heat shielding with flame retardant blanket stuff under the foil. I got it about right for the spot there and this burn mark hasn't changed in over 50 hours since so I think it's pretty good. Regardless, I'm keeping an eye on that. So for the roll, we'll just do on this heading. It's gonna be about a 20 degree pull up. Okay. And then neutralize and then give her pretty much all the other on. Okay. Are okay. right, you ready? Ready. That here is. is so crisp and nice. Yeah, it's 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 a good roll rate, no question. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. you got controls? 
Call your so I mean, you want to give me any like insights on your experience flying your own RV? Oh, it's it's awesome. We call this the uh, the baby RV because it's a little bit smaller, but it's a lot of fun. I got this when I was probably a 110 hour pilot. Perry checked me out in the uh, the RV7, and uh, Ron Holden, Perry and Ron Holden both checked me out in that. So after about I don't know 10 hours or so, I could uh, land a tail dragger, and then they said, okay, well jump in the four and take it for a ride, <laughs> right? I thought, well, you know, I mean, they, everybody says it flies pretty well the same as uh, any other RV, and uh, they were right. So I, I took it up and did some circuits, and it, it was exactly the same, you know. So, so uh, I think I've got uh, pretty well 101 hours on it now. So I, I initially thought I probably wasn't going to be a huge fan of the pulley and spring dampened tailwheel arrangement uh, versus like a, a fixed rod. We've actually been running this. We have the fixed rod um, upgrade. We've never installed it. I think this actually steers really well, although it is, it's a solid tailwheel. This thing really is a harsh ride on the ground. This airplane loves to be in the air. It does not really love being on the ground. It's not a, not a training airplane. The gear, both the spring steel and the tailwheel are probably a little punishing if you're not really good at landing the airplane or on a really nice surface. It will, if your runway's got bumps or bounces or it's uneven, it will send you flying again because that, that gear is springy. So the tailwheel, the original stock as ship tailwheel, I feel is a little maybe under-engineered. The bearings in this design are really vulnerable bearings. They're not really greasable. They feel kind of wheelbarrow-ish. This is the upgrade available from Vans. Highly recommend you just don't even bother with the original. Just throw this upgrade on. It's got some sealed uh, kind of like Apex style bearings in there. This, this is, I think, almost everybody goes with this. We've been through two of these ones. Not a huge fan. Other upgrades were the custom glare shield distributed by Aircraft Specialty. The interior is from Classic Aero Designs and I went with hooker harnesses. So essentially we went top end with all this stuff for the interior. And on John's RV4, he managed to do it a lot cheaper than we did. And uh, yeah, we're pretty well done messing with it. I put a little bit of an interior in. That's a homemade interior. So that interior cost about $280. I made the, uh, the stick boots on my uh, on our sewing machine so that cost you know about 10 bucks worth of material i put some carpeting in i think that cost 80 dollars for the roll which i used about an eighth of so i think i'm ready for the next project and back on board with ray the tower had us extend our downwind so we were on quite a long final here and ray's got us set up on a bit of an airliner profile that's under carriage mixture prop switches on secure you're secure and we are we are clear land yeah um I think he's at time. <laughs> Ground Barry 2, Charlie Golf Alpha Tower, winds 1506, clear to land, runway 12. That's probably the coolest feature about this audio panel. Alright, one more notch is about to come down, and it'll, it'll take a lot of trim. You ready? Yep, okay, ready. Here it comes. 500. That backfiring normal? Yeah. And then 85 is good? Yeah. Alright, so I guess I'll take it. Hey, you got it. I got control. I definitely like to fly steeper, tighter approaches in this airplane, but one upside to being set up on such a shallow profile here is it's kind of easy to do a super greasy landing. Okay, I tried to cover a lot in this episode, but if I missed anything, please comment with your questions. I'm also going to keep a detailed list in the description with all the components and the related links, and I'll try to edit and update that if anything significant changes. And if you make it to AirVenture this year, the airplane and I will be at the Hartzell booth, so please come by for a fist bump and a free sticker. And until next time, keep your flight chops sharp. And grounded, Charlie Golf Alpha. I'm just monitoring you heading back to the museum, is that correct? Charlie Golf Alpha ground, that's correct. Okay, thanks, have a good night. See you, dude. Flight up. Yes, sir. How you doing? Not bad, how you doing? You filming that day? Oh, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> that must feel weird having conversations on frequency. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs>